we're going to start out here for service with prayer and I'd like to bow our heads for prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time we've spent uh, in your word, and we thank you, Lord, for the word which we have to read and to study and, and to learn more about you. We pray, Lord, that uh, what I might say through you, Lord, that might help someone just to go closer to you, to realize how much you love them, and, and Lord, they need to love you in turn, Lord, and not only love you, but love their brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the, this opportunity we have, and we pray, Lord, that your blessing will be upon this, this uh, time we've spent in together. We ask these things in our name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be reading from uh, John, the 13th chapter, uh, beginning at the 34th verse. Uh, this is Jesus speaking. It's, uh, uh, he says in the 34th verse, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another and by... This shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you love one another. We'll stop right there when we think about uh, here. Uh, you know, Jesus starts out here in uh, this 34th verse that says, A new commandment um, I'm given to you. Um, and you give it to the disciples. And I think it follows, uh, follows on down to you. This commandment I give you. I did not say... Uh, a new su suggestion but he, he says it's a commandment uh, being in the military when that uh, commander gives you a command uh, it's not negotiable Amen. and this is uh, not negotiable uh, being in uh, the army and uh, there at Fort Knox, Kentucky and your commanding officer gives commands uh, and uh, he expects you to obey, obey that or you suffer the consequences. Um, I remember one time we had um, a GI party and the question was asked, where do you put your civilian clothes? Well, they said he laundry bag. Well, we had one guy, uh, he was uh, just a goof off, I guess in a, in a way. He, uh, he hit his... Uh, toothbrush, his canteen, his uh, helmets and stuff inside his laundry bag. And when the company commander come through, he come down to his, expecting his area, he didn't find what he wanted. Because it was commanded that you toothbrush laid a certain way, your socks rolled up laid a certain way, and all this, well, he went over and kicked the duffel bag which they put their civilian clothes in, and they, he reached over and picked it up and pulled it out. And um, they're coming out of canteen, and uh, his helmet, his toothbrush. Well, after the, the commander left, here comes the drill sergeant. And he said, come go with me and bring your toothbrush. And his punishment for not obeying the command was to go throw everything out of the dumpster, take a pan of water and his toothbrush and scrubbed inside this dumpster. <laughs> well, he made a mistake. When he got done, he threw stuff back in. Cut. Joe started to come back and said, uh, did I tell you to put that stuff back in? He said, take it back out, wash it again. You know, you got to follow commands. You know, and here's a great command that uh, as uh, you and I, uh, as Christians, is to love one another, and that's not uh, negotiable. And um, we think about loving one another, uh, you know, and that's a, a great, I think it's a, like a, a great thing that you and I would come in this church and we can fellowship together and we can love one another and pray for one another and even, even to the point that we pray for the sinners. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard a guy say one time, well, you know, 
he's trying to get people back into church because there's a problem. And he said, come on back, I've got the sinners out of the church. And we don't need the sinners out of the church. We need just people that are in sin here that we can uh, tell them about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His great love, uh, which when He loved us, and that uh, in turn, uh, we, we accepted that love that He had, and He, he, he saved us by His marvelous grace. And uh, that's what we need to help people realize, uh, that they need, they need uh, salvation. And there's someone here that loves them, and, and uh, we'll be praying for them uh, there in that uh, 35th verse, he says, uh, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. And that's telling us we need to show that love Amen. Uh, to, to each other. And, and not just uh, 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 people uh, that are saved, but to, also to people that are in sin. Uh, and we can love them to the Lord. So we got to realize we have a great responsibility is uh, to live our life uh, before men that they can see that love, they can feel that love uh, that uh, we have for them. Uh, over in John, 1 John uh, 4 uh, and uh, 7 and uh, through 17, it, it's speaking to you and I, uh, there in that seventh verse, uh, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for the love is of God, and everyone that loveth is, is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen. That's a great verse. Amen. You know, God is love. It's, uh, and he, 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 he says, he that loveth not knoweth not God. Uh, you, you see today there's a lot of uh, things going on in our world. Uh, in the United States we have uh, uh, people are not showing the love. We see the rights and uh, the everything that's going on. People being beat up and uh, murdered and different things. And even to the even abortion. I, uh, 60 million Baby being aborted because mom don't want them. They're not loved. Now, I've got a grandchild uh, coming on uh, pretty soon. I think about June, July, this, this baby will be born. And we, do, we already feel that love just uh, by, wa by watching the actions of uh, the the video that they took, you know, the heartbeat. You see that heartbeat. You know, uh, and that's a, that's a great thing to have a, a grandchild or a, even our own children, how much uh, uh, we love them. And uh, we, you know, and they should see the love that we have, even the love that you and I have between a husband and wife. Uh, we need to, uh, to show them that love. In turn, when they get married or they get to, uh, out away from us, they, they know that we love them. Amen. I think about the prodigal son and how he took his journey. That love did not stop with that father when he left the home. That love continued and uh, he uh, made his journey back uh, to his father's house, uh, and and the father welcomed him with with open arms. And I'm gonna continue reading here. Uh, I done read to think the eighth verse, in the ninth verse. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And what that's telling me that that His love was manifested uh, toward us when God was uh, uh, was the only begotten Son of God. Uh, it was Jesus Christ. 
He came into the world that we might live through him. Um, I didn't begin to really realize I was dead. Now, when I not, it doesn't say I wasn't breathing or talking, but that tells me that I was dead in trespasses sin. And that great love wherein he loved me, he made me alive. Uh, you know, he in uh, that I would be able to live with him here, and and more more uh, I'd have a home in heaven to live with him there forever. This we go through this world; it's it's kind of temporary. Uh, we'll pass away one day. I don't know the day nor the hour, but I'm ready to go, and I hope you are ready to go also. Because of that love of God, we can get ready. And the Bible tells us here in this uh, 10th verse that He was the propitiation for our sins. He took our place upon Calvary. He did not deserve to die. We deserve to die. And, uh, but He took our place. He took our sins upon Him and, and uh, took Him to the cross. And there He died for, for your sins in my sins. The left verse, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. So, when you think about uh, no man has seen God at any time, but one day we will, won't we? Amen. When we get up there, uh, uh, got loved ones that's gone on to meet him, and uh, you know there are many, uh, and uh, I'm glad they were saved. But there's some, no doubt, that I'm not aware of. It's probably went on to, uh, and uh, didn't know him. That's an awful fate to think about, to fall into the hands of a, of a just God. You know, you think about the words that some hear, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, and go serve the one you served on earth. But he loves us enough that he, he's willing to forgive us and save us if we are willing to accept him. And I hope today that you're willing uh, and, uh, and will accept him if you've not already done that. Uh, in the 14th verse, and we, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be our Savior of the world. And whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. I believe that he loves me. I feel the love. Uh, that he has, and uh, and, he, and he gives other people the same love that, and and we feel that love. You know, we walk into the church, and and uh, we've not been able to come in, you know, uh, as we want to, had to because of this virus we have, but we still we come in, we love to see one another, and even to walk around the parking lot when weather fit is to go around and talk to someone and and uh, that love that you feel you know you you miss people when they're not here uh, and uh, that's uh, that letting them know how much we love them God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him and herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because he is because as he is so are we in the world and uh, you know Jesus calls us to this new command uh, that was kind of unusual uh, I guess for the disciples and them to hear uh, and uh, that new command it, when it it comes and it goes against our old nature doesn't it uh, and uh, that old nature, we got to be careful that the old nature uh, doesn't overtake us. Uh, that uh, we 
we continue uh, striving uh, to live for the Lord and to love one another and, and, and put away the old nature. That When we were saved, uh, old things passed away and, and behold, all things become new. Uh, this is uh, this person is saved and, and they, they begin to feel the love and, and uh, the things that uh, God has in store for them. Uh, the, that old nature passes away. Uh, we got to be uh, one uh, uh, care for what we do and, and you know and where we go. Uh, my sister, she said, I can't believe the change in you. Well, it wasn't the, the, the change come through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, he changed me, changed me completely, and uh, he wanted me to live for him. And I've strived to do that. I've failed. I say each one of us probably could raise our hand and, and say we failed along life's journey at different times, uh, but uh, we know that uh, He loves us and He put us where we're at today. Um, I remember living in Chicago. It, that was an uh, uh, experience and a half. But when I come to Tennessee, I experienced the love of a church. I experienced the love of an uncle who was willing to take me to church, whether mom and dad did or not. He willingly took me uh, every Sunday that I stayed with him. I helped him farm, milk cows, put up hay, pick corn, just did, he, he, and in that love, he still, he taught me something. He taught me how to work. He, he taught me what love was. Something I didn't have growing up, and because of him and uh, getting here to hear the word and hear about the love of Jesus, I become a new creature. I made a change, and uh, I, lo I love that change that He has given me. Uh, and uh, our our basic instinct to you know, and it's sad. Our basic instinct sometimes is to to love only the people that love us. And that's not right. No. We to love one another, each other. Amen. And we're to strive to, to do that, uh, is putting away that old nature of hatefulness and hate, and, uh, and, uh, but, to, but to, to love. Uh, and I, and uh, not only to love them, but love us, but to love those who despitefully use us, uh, different things. We're to pray for them uh, because why? We love them. We want something, we want them to be saved and become a new creature in Him. Well, think about this a command, you know, and uh, you, you see a lot of people, they disobey the commands uh, of, of what is, is uh, laid in store. I think about going down the road a lot of times, and I'm glad that he loves me enough. He take care of me uh, uh, down Levity Highway. But you see people, they see a stop sign, and they slow down. They look down the highway and pull out. You know, they don't stop at a stop sign. They look just long enough to see if anything's coming, and sometimes they make a mistake. I'm pulling on out and getting hit. Remind me of a story of a woman and her, her husband going down the road. And uh, he came up to a stop sign while he had to slow down and go on through. And she'd get after him. You know, that didn't say slow down, it said stop. I said it, it uh, I slowed down good enough to be safe. And so that went on about a day or two, and she took her pocketbook. And, it started hitting him, just as hard as she could hit him, fast as she could hit him. And it, she says, now, you want me to slow down or stop? And no doubt, if it's like my wife's pocketbook, uh, it's heavy, and uh, it would hurt to get hit by it, especially when she's carrying her Smith & Weston 38 in there. Uh, it's heavy, and it, when you get hit by it, you want her to stop. 
So, you know, we need to obey uh, as a witness to people the laws of the land. You know, stop at the stop signs. Stop at the red light. Uh, yield. You know, different things uh, that we need to be doing. And I'm going to turn uh, to John, the 15th chapter. Uh, some more things that uh, are spoke of uh, about love. This is a book of love, you just really realize it. It starts at Genesis, uh, where God formed us in His own image. But the 15th chapter of uh, John, beginning at the 12th verse, said, this is, a new, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. A greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, but servants knoweth not what the Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And when we think about what he says about that commandment, that great love, now think about the greater love had no man that laid down his life for his friends. It's hard, I guess, sometimes just to realize how much he loves us. Uh, but he laid down his life for you and me because why? He loves us. It's a great, greater love had no man to lay down his life for his friends. And he calls us friends. You and I, are friends. Uh, uh, should be friends of His. Not only friends of His, but friends of our brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ. And we're, we're to show forth that love. Uh, and He laid down His life for you and for me. And, uh, and we're, a, we're a partly what you would say a servant of His. We are to help one another a long life's journey. Uh, when one has a need, you know, you and I are to pray for them and to help them uh, through life's journeys, uh, for, through the toils of this life, uh, through sadness, through sickness, through death. We're to help one another and to serve one another. Uh, and that's what I think he expects of us. Uh, and that you and I, we're going to uh, show forth the, the fruit that he has for you and I. It tells us in this 15th chapter that uh, uh, he is the vine and we are the branches. Uh, we're to eat as, as a branch connects on to the vine. And you and I connect on to him. You and I, we're, uh, we, we get our nourishment. We get our training. We get... Everything we need from Him. Uh, and uh, we're, we're, we're need to think about that. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Uh, that's the fruits that you and I need to have. You and I need to have. Uh, so you think about that. Did I say 22? 5 and 22 uh, is, uh, I may have misquoted that verse of scripture, but uh, I'll go turn there pretty easy. Uh, if you think about, uh, as you and I uh, have that uh, through the spirit of love, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, I've got uh, some things, a comment here. Uh, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit begins with love. Love is the is the first thing, the first in that precious cluster of fruit. Uh, someone has said that all other eight can be put in terms of love. Joy is love. Exalting peace is love. In repose, long suffering is love. Uh, on trial, gentleness is love in society, goodness is love in action, faith is love 
on the battlefield. Meekness is love at school, and temperance is love in training. So it is love all the way. Love at the top, love at the bottom, and all the way along down this list of graces. That's D.L. Moody, a great man of God. Uh, and uh, I like to read after him a lot of things uh, that he's put out there. Uh, but he, he's done a, a, a good job. In Romans 5 and 8 tells, uh, tells us a lot of things to you and I that uh, says, For when we are without strength in due time, died for the ungodly. He had a great thing to think about. When we were without strength, when we were poor and wretched and out in, out in sin in due time, he died for you and I. And uh, in eight, the 8th verse tells us that but God commanded his love toward us and then while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He, that great love, he committed to us. And it's hard to imagine people being that cruel to, you know, they beat him with a cat of nine tails, you know, that uh, whipped him, the, the crown of thorns, they plucked his beard. Uh, and uh, the punishment he took for you and for me. And then the final thing there they did was to nail him to a cross. Uh, you know, but the, it, it was just the nails, that, you know, after they put him up, stood him up there before the crowd, the crowd hollering, you know, and different things. But the thing that held him to the cross was not the nails, but it was his love. He went all the way. He suffered for you and for me. Why? Because he loved us. He loved us. And that, he loved the people around that were screaming and hollering you know, at him and, and mocking him. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. You know, the... the the Pharisees, the Sadducees, stuff, uh, and the chief priests, they, they uh, roused up the crowd to where they wanted him crucified. And they brought him before false witness and different things. They wanted to do away with him. Why? Because he pointed to a different way, a better way, a loving way. And... Um, when you and I think of that, you know, Easter's coming upon us a few short months, and let us think about that. Great love. We're, we're here. He loved us. And uh, he died. You know, it's not about the Easter eggs and the Easter bunny, and it's about that great love where he loved us, that he has willingly laid down his life for you and for me, that we might have salvation. You know, salvation's plan was fulfilled that great day that he took his, they took him and crucified him and he went from there to the grave. But he didn't stay long. He just borrowed the tomb for three days and rose that, that third appointed day that you and I, we can know that He's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. And one day the Father is going to say, go get your church. And I'm glad as a saved individual, I'm part of that church. And if you're saved today, you are part of that church. You know, people say, well, I want to go to church. Well, you know, we are the church. This is just a building that we meet in. Uh, it's not the church. Uh, when we go to church, we come. We are the church, and we come in to to praise the Lord, to worship Him, to uh, be around one another, to fellowship, to learn more about Him. Uh, and uh, and we go away from this place uh, to serve 
in some capacity, whether it's going to visit his sick or, or, or helping someone that's got a need. Uh, we have our food truck, which we have. Uh, uh, we have people coming out receiving food uh, because of the love of this church. We have a great outreach. Uh, not only the food truck, but we have a great outreach in the mission field. Uh, and I challenge you to, to get involved in the service of the church um, as an individual. Uh, we have, Sunday, hopefully soon we'll have Sunday school classes starting back. Uh, so that's going to be a great thing. Starting back and, and uh, where we come together and learn uh, more about Him. And uh, i like to close in prayer and uh, thank you for uh, the test, I hope I've said something that will help you uh, to think about loving one another and, and loving the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the scripture. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to come. Help us, Lord, just to learn more about you, Lord, that we may love you uh, to the best of our ability, Lord. And uh, help our, our shortcomings that uh, we could just come and uh, just to learn more about you, Lord. We can learn more to help one another, Lord, along life's journey. Forgive us, Lord, when we fail you, Lord, and, and uh, we pray, Lord, for Sunday morning service. We, we meet together uh, for the first time in a long time, Lord, and, and we thank you, Lord, for that. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you be a Brother Tim. Uh, we pray that you just help him and, and Help us just do what he, he had uh, needed us to do to help him along uh, his ministry. We ask his saints in thy name. Amen.